Uh, so, uh, well, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, hola, everyone. Did you notice that there are uh, free talks at the same time with the word distributed in name? The Euro Python folks uh, have some sense of humor, for sure. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself, uh, as uh, it was already did. Uh, so I'm a software developer and a maintenance guy at so Focus Telecom Poland. Uh, my main toys are Gevent, Twisted, and Celery. Uh, what we are doing at the company is to providing a business-to-business -business, uh, telecommunication solutions. Like uh, we host teleconferences, we uh, sell PebExes, and but uh, our main product is a contact center. So uh, nowadays you have uh, multiple ways to communicate with each other. Uh, there are social media, there are SMS text messages, uh, well there are emails, and there are phone calls. So a contact center is a way to unify all this, to uh, gain a much better uh, contact with your customer. Uh, so uh, throughout this talk, I will show you the um, principles of implementing distributed logs in Redis uh, using Python, uh, and uh, show the usage in a real life application. So uh, does everyone know, or uh, does anybody doesn't know what Redis is? Okay, there are some hands, so I will uh, quickly refer to that. Uh, the Redis is a NoSQL database. It's a basic uh, key value storage, but the key can be only a string, but the value uh, can be a more complicated data structure. Uh, for the sake of this talk, most important are string and list. They are pretty much like Python counterparts. And also Redis has a simple uh, support for a message passing. Uh, so uh, first of all, I will uh, introduce uh, some case study. Uh, then I will show you how to implement uh, correctly a distributed uh, binary semaphore, so-called mutex, and later on semaphore. And finally, I will give you some tips, and there will be some time for questions. So, uh, first of all, this is a loose uh, definition uh, that I came up with a few days ago. Um, the Guido, on his, his talk uh, yesterday, has uh, uh, gave a great example of uh, locking and uh, keeping safe uh, the uh, reference counters. The other case would be that uh, we have a shared database connection between uh, threads in Python, and we would not like to other thread uh, sending some uh, SQL comments while uh, the other thread was uh, trying to carry out a transaction. So this is basically what lock is. It's, it's to protect a shared resource. Mm. So the case study will concern a contact center. Hope nobody expected that. So, uh, in the contact center, uh, uh, work uh, people, of course, and we ref refer to them as agents. Uh, so, an agent uh, can answer on originate a phone calls, uh, email messages, text messages, or carry out chat, chat conversations, and this kind of stuff. Uh, well, and the main advantage of contact center is that it automates all of this kind of work. So uh, it keeps the agents busy. So they are uh, not uh, looking at the floor or uh, sailing. Okay. Uh, but to be this concept more familiar, I have uh, replaced agent with a giant W that stands for a worker. And uh, E are tasks. So you could say that uh, this looks like a task QE. Uh, who doesn't know any task QE solutions like Celery, RQ, Germans? Are there anyone who hasn't heard uh, any one of them? No, there are. It's good. Uh, so basically, you know the concept. And this is the problem we are trying to solve. Uh, yeah, it looks uh, similar. Uh, you know the stuff. You can apply a working solution, as it will be great, right? Wrong. Uh, there are a couple of things that you have to worry about. Uh, first of all, a worker is an autonomous creature. 
and it can uh, choose whether to work or not. Uh, he can uh, simply log out of the system and he will not be available anymore. And this is a normal situation. This is not a failure of system or some kind. You cannot force somebody to stay logged in and work, at least not in Poland. Uh, well, uh, the tasks must, must be prioritized and this is a, a heavily desired feature from our clients, so uh, yeah, uh, I don't know uh, if any other uh, distributed task queue is like Celery support this. As far as I know, in Celery you can partially achieve this by uh, routing to different queues, and that's all. So it's also not sufficient. And the last, mm, mostly mind-blowing, is that uh, uh, one worker can handle multiple tasks simultaneously. And from, I, I don't mean concurrently, but simultaneously, so in parallel, at least from a point of view of task manager. So this will be viewed that way. Of course, uh, Q1 cannot carry out two phone conversations at the same time. But uh, why not uh, write an email and speak to somebody? That's fine. Uh, so our solution uh, depicted uh, as a whole looks for some centralized task manager and it's uh, written use, uh, using Twisted. And the Redis will serve as a Lux uh, server and will hold them all. Uh, so the first thing I would like to say is about uh, binary semaphore. It has only two states. It can be rock, locked or unlocked. Uh, to, get, to lock it, I will refer to this as acquiring and to unlocking as releasing. This is the same as the uh, in standard Python library. Uh, who has a background with multiprocessing or multi-threading library? Yeah, that's, that's quite a lot. And uh, who was on the Monday talk on this? Yeah, that's quite a few things. Uh, so, mm, and it will be stored as a ready string mm, and all calls to acquire it or release will be non-blocking from Python. Uh, so, uh, the first use case is about uh, keeping state of a worker, uh, whether he's busy or idle. Uh, so, meaning that uh, lock is uh, uh, released, it's the same as idle and so on. And uh, the lock will be acquired when a task manager will assign a task, and it will be released afterwards, so it, it's over. Um, and the second case is about preventing race conditions. Uh, the one I mentioned that a uh, worker would like to log out sometimes and, I don't know, go for a break or something. Uh, that he can uh, do it using this uh, mechanism because it can acquire a log before a task manager do. Uh, or it will simply do not release it after finishing its uh, previous task. Okay. Uh, so, uh, since this is uh, stored in this Redis as string, we would use two Redis commands uh, a set to store a log to set the string, and a get to retrieve it. Uh, what we need is atomicity. Uh, every single command of Redis is an atomic one, so no one else can uh, disrupt your data. Uh, so the first draft I th we have a Chrome disk was something like that. We getting the um, log, checking if we can lock it actually, and then do it. But there is a problem uh, because. Um, uh, between get and set, uh, there is some uh, instruction running, and uh, this as a whole is not atomic, so someone else might have changed this in the meantime, and this is a problem, and uh, it's not acceptable then. So we'll introduce some kind of Redis transactions. Uh, this is not a real transaction in a sense of SQL databases, but it uh, allows you to execute a bunch of commands in an atomic way. Uh, so, uh, we issue the command watch uh, and giving the key name. So this uh, will be uh, carefully watched during the transaction. Uh, and finally, if uh, we cannot do anything, then we unwatch it. So this connection will be uh, free of uh, side effects later. 
Mm, the next step will be to introduce uh, the transaction uh, denotions, multi and exec. These actually will denote a transaction or the things that should be done conditionally only if a watched key has not been changed. So I guess that's uh, uh, quite simple stuff. Uh, okay, the important part that uh, task manager um, sometimes would like to know whether the state changed. Uh, where, uh, when we log the worker, uh, he will find it eventually, but uh, when we do not, uh, when we are freeing it, it must know uh, when the worker has freed, so we can actually uh, perform some action, like for example, look uh, for the next uh, task for it. And uh, to receive the notifications, we issue a subscribe command. But uh, to be more precise, uh, on the Python side, so this is a task manager, uh, mm, as I stated, it's written in twisted. There is some kind of magic like uh, log, uh, like uh, ready subscriber will uh, handle the subs subscribe and uh, actions for them for you. Mm, and this is the event driven. You see the uh, very ugly method name message receive, uh, which is written camel case. And uh, mm, by overloading this method, you actually define the uh, behavior for this. Uh, so uh, the second part will be about distributed semaphore. So uh, the semaphore uh, is different from lock in that way that it maintains an internal counter. Uh, so it means that it can be released or acquired many times. Uh, uh, for if we define a semaphore with counter two, we can acquire it twice and also release it twice. But the original counter cannot uh, be uh, exceeded by further calls. And this will be stored as redis list and uh, the calls to it will be blocking. Mm. So the use case is that we can handle a multiple task at the same time. As I stated before, the usual lock is not uh, sufficient and the use of a bunch of uh, binary mm, semaphores would not be sufficient too. Uh, so uh, this is similar to string operations, but now we are using R push, which stands for uh, write push, so uh, it will append an element to a list and uh, better pop, which stands for blocking write pop. So it will uh, pop an element from a list. And our push will uh, serve as a, uh, as a release operation and a blocking uh, write pop as an acquiring operation. So when there's nothing there, and means that semaphore has been acquired maximum number of times, uh, the command will block until there's something there. Mm. So, uh, in the Python part, we do not change anything because it uh, reacts only on events. Eventually, you can uh, implement your checking whether the semaphore uh, is uh, free or not. Uh, and there are cases when you might need a state of semaphore after changing it. Uh, it's, uh, you could use uh, previously showed a multi-exec block, but uh, that's not always the case. An alternative is to write a simple Lua script. You see that it's very much like Python in this case, except this uh, word local, so it means it's, uh, we are allocating a local variable, so it will be uh, garbage collected after this block. And uh, this script only uh, uh, releases our log and uh, return a length that we have left. Uh, okay, uh, but there's a warning. Uh, Multi-exec blocks and uh, Lua scripts all are atomic in Redis. The problem is that uh, blocking uh, invocations in mm, atomic way has not, not sense this time. Uh, so it would mean that the Redis instance has to be blocked forever to serve this one. So uh, making bare pop inside multi-exec will return you nil, so it's none in uh, Python client, or, uh, and invoking such a Lua script will, uh, Redis will respond you with an error. 
Uh, alternatively, you can use an AirPop. So with uh, its non-blocking feature, it will return you either nil if there's uh, if lock cannot be acquired or uh, a value if it has. Uh, some final remarks before you uh, rush and implement these solutions in your software. Uh, please care about starting conditions. Uh, make sure that the uh, locks are uh, properly instantiated before using them. And study carefully control flow in your application to not uh, introduce too many locks or too less. And uh, also, please work up a restoring state procedure. When uh, something goes wrong, uh, there might be cases when the state written in Redis is not uh, finally consistent. So you might want to fix that some way. For example, we persist uh, a state in a SQL database as uh, some kind of history of activity of a given worker, so we can uh, restore uh, a state uh, properly after some uh, kind of failure. So, uh, well, that's all for me. And now it's time for some questions, if you have some, of course. Thank you. Hello. Um, have you considered using set nx for uh, the lock, the set nx command? Uh, you mean set an X, right? Yeah, yes, yes. For lock. Yes. Uh, yeah, I uh, we have read about this, uh, and this is described also on uh, Redis documentation, as far as I know. Uh, but uh, well, uh, uh, this is an expiring uh, comment, as far as I know. Yeah. You can use it as a non-expiring command. You don't need to set an expiry. Yeah, but. Uh, mm, uh, somehow it didn't uh, fit our needs. Uh, I can't remember now why, but uh, no, it wasn't sufficient for this kind of locking. Yeah, but that's an alternative for sure. Okay. Uh, have you tried to look at other implementations besides the, the, the built-in lock implementation in a Redis client? Mm, you mean beside Redis, right? Yeah, besides the official Redis client. Uh, well, uh, the ideally, it would be to write your own locks uh, server in Python. Uh, but uh, the case is that uh, some code base we have, and the most is written in PHP. So um, it has to be something outside. Ah, I see. Okay. Hi. Uh, when you're talking about distributed semaphores and locks, are we talking about, uh, so are the locks in one location, so in one Redis instance, and the workers can be distributed? Or um, are the locks and semaphores yeah. actually distributed? Yeah, that's a good question, and uh, I hope that someone asked that. Uh, well, uh, basically we use a single Redis instance for uh, serving our logs behind, due to different limitations, uh, we do not need more resources, but uh, distribution uh, you can achieve is by either uh, sharding Redis instances, and this is done automatically by uh, using Redis cluster starting from Redis 3.0, uh, or uh, replication, which is also in, in this kind. But uh, when I prepared this, I meant distribution by, uh, yeah, the workers are distributed. And mm, these are different kind of resources that might achieve a log. Uh, sorry, acquire. Yeah. Uh, does this uh, answer your question? Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Have you tried, uh, have you thought about using Zookeeper? Uh, because I'm, I'm not entirely familiar with it, but my colleagues at work use it, and it's supposedly that, uh, which is, uh, you know, synchronizing few, few distributed uh, you know, instances right. of anything to only, you know, uh, get one resource at a time. Uh, 
well, uh, we didn't. And uh, I have read about uh, something like Zookeeper just uh, yesterday on O'Reilly stand. <laughs> Uh, but I will uh, surely consider that. So thanks for a suggestion. But uh, no, I don't have any experience with that. Me too, but it seems like a good idea. So. <laughs> yeah, if it would be simpler or better in some case, why not replace? Yeah, because it's used supposedly to uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, select the name node in a Hadoop cluster, for example. So this is also a, you know, a distrib really distributed system and only, you know, you have to you know, uh, think about it and uh, synchronize that, so Zookeeper is supposedly for that. And yeah, I and will uh, investigate this for sure, and if I came up with something interesting, I'm sure I will give a talk at the next occasion. Not, not this year, I think. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. A any more questions? Um, uh, well, I do have one, though. Um, have you actually ever seen anyone talking on a phone and writing an email at the same time? Yeah, myself. <laughs> Do you manage to actually make well, sense? Well, uh, you know, there are uh, some studies that uh, shows that uh, human that is uh, carrying out a few uh, simultaneous tasks uh, is uh, completely reduced by its brain uh, capabilities. So uh, it was, there was a comparison in book I heard, read that uh, it, uh, he behaves uh, as if he had a brain of a 16, six years old child. So, you know, I don't uh, find personally that uh, multiple uh, tasks at the same time are a super killing feature, but that's what the business wants. Yeah. Yeah, because they respond with some delay, so, yeah. Maybe. So, any more questions? I guess we're good then. Um, um, thank you again, Sebastian.